Hi everyone, it's Jay here and today I'm talking about what it takes to go from a junior data scientist all the way to a super senior staff data scientist. What actually varies between skill level, responsibilities, daily tasks, and everyone's favorite topic, total compensation. Let's start out and clarify that there are actually two paths for any kind of technical role, including data scientists. There's the management path and the individual contributor path. Today for part one, we'll be focusing on the individual contributor path. The individual contributor path references data scientists that work on core projects, contribute code, run analyses, and build ETL pipelines and machine learning models. The management path references data scientists that become people managers. They help scale data strategy and they work on fitting the pieces of a data organization together. Both paths start from the same place of an entry level data science role, all the way to a senior data science role where then they actually diverge. As they advance in their careers, the individual contributors can decide to become managers or remain highly specialized data scientists. So let's start out with the lowest level, the junior data scientists and data science interns. What do you have to know and what do you actually end up doing? Honestly, when you start out, it's not that much. At this stage, you're super raw. Entry-level data scientists are usually developing their core technical skills like SQL and Python. And so tasks are generally straightforward and have a clear objective goal. If you're a data science intern, you can usually contribute value by building scripts or prototyping projects with data visualizations and models. You really won't have too much time to ship production code or understand the business, so the best thing you can do is add value wherever possible. Junior data scientists, on the other hand, also work within a specific scope. For example, instead of tackling an ambiguous analytics problem, like what's influencing customer purchasing behavior on an e-commerce website, an entry-level data scientist would be given a smaller task to write a query to calculate customer churn rates, or maybe build a dashboard to look at purchases by marketing channel for the e-commerce website. If an entry-level data scientist was given a more advanced task, so let's say building a model and deploying into production, there would be likely a daily check-in with a senior data scientist to help them get unblocked, do code reviews, and learn how to integrate into the existing system. Notice the keyword I've been using here in which junior data scientists are many times given a task instead of actually finding one. What separates the junior data scientist from advancing to the next role is understanding exactly what to build. A junior data scientist might also brainstorm on strategy and architecture, but mainly their work is focused towards producing work for other people, their managers, and other stakeholders. So salaries for data science interns usually range from minimum wage to even $40 an hour at some fan companies. Similarly, for entry-level data scientist roles, they're paid around 80 to 100K a year, but at the fan companies, it's pretty common for them to make even over 150K a year in total compensation. In this case, it's because a lot of these companies are hiring for data science potential more than the actual value that they're providing. After around one to two years of experience as an entry-level data scientist, you figuratively advance into the next role, which is a mid-level data scientist. Mid-level data scientists are advanced individual contributors that can take up larger projects and scopes and more ambiguous business requirements. For example, while a junior data scientist would be creating the SQL queries for an ETL pipeline, a mid-level data scientist should be able to architect the entire ETL pipeline from scratch and use it in their own machine learning model. A data scientist who has moved past the junior stage doesn't need as many check-ins and can usually unblock themselves without having to ask other data scientists for help. Additionally, from a product perspective, a mid-level data scientist can grasp a higher level understanding of the business problems and how to use data science to solve those problems. This means more autonomy in terms of project choice and project management as well. Data scientists will always have more than enough projects to work on, and so prioritizing projects is the first step in leveling your career. That way, someone doesn't actually have to go to you and hand work to you on a plate. Most mid-level data scientists can earn anywhere from $120,000 to $180,000 in the Bay Area. In other cities, generally that amount is going to be a little bit lower depending on cost of living. But at the fan companies, this number can actually shoot up to over $200,000 a year to maybe even $250,000 a year. Finally, Let's talk about senior data scientists. What actually differentiates a senior data scientist from the rest? While years of experience actually does matter a lot, there are better features that actually differentiate a more senior data scientist from a less senior data scientist. Oftentimes, someone who has worked in data science for five to seven years, their title will likely be called a senior. But someone with 20 plus years of experience in data science could still be a worse data scientist than someone with five years of experience. Many companies have now instituted different levels to evaluate candidates that are going for individual contributor roles that help determine total compensation as well. 
The skills of a data scientist can be measured on interviews by testing speed and accuracy on technical problems, but also by evaluating communication skills that are really important as you get more experience on the job. Many of these skills are also more observable when you actually start working. For example, most senior data scientists should be able to onboard themselves in the business and the technical architecture. They should have high data accuracy and quality. They should have good code quality and completeness. They should be able to understand project scope and where to prioritize applications of data science as well. They should have really good communication of technical concepts. And finally, they should have a strong ability to mentor junior data scientists. So depending on how well a data scientist scores on these different traits, that kind of determines how senior of a level that they'll actually be. The best data scientists can take a highly ambiguous problem and architect a solution from beginning to end by themselves or in a team environment. The level of efficiency that they can complete this task is what actually determines their value. For example, let's say that a startup wants to build their first A-B testing system. A good senior data scientist would figure out business requirements and scope. They would ask questions like, why would we need an A-B testing system? Do we need it for email, the back end, or only the front end for the landing page? Or how many users does the system actually need to handle in the future? So once they actually figure out the scope, the senior data scientist would then begin architecting a system to actually build. They would think about how to randomly distribute the users into different buckets, how to create different functions that other data scientists can reuse in their code later on, and they figure out what kind of deliverable would be built so that product managers and executives can run experiments and monitor tests on their side as well. And then lastly, they'd be able to figure out how to debug all these A-B tests by analyzing the data themselves. So in general, how much do these senior data scientists actually get paid? The short answer is it's a lot. And depending on their level, they can make anywhere from $150,000 a year to over a million dollars a year or more. And usually the best senior data scientists understand how they can justify their, their salaries. But it's good to note the fact that if you even just work for 20 plus years in data science, you probably won't make a million dollars or more because you need to reach that level of achievement just like all the other data scientists that can within that skill level. It is a function of distribution as well. The top 1% probably make a lot more than the middle 50%, and that's just how, as we know, statistics does work. So ultimately, at the end of the day, data science career progression can be like any other role. As human beings, we take on bigger and bigger tasks as we gain experience in the game of life. Your value as a data scientist then becomes how much value you can add and the solutions you build relating to data. So please stay tuned for part two, where we will understand how this transition effect undergoes for leadership and people management roles. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and comment on what you actually want to see. And I'll talk to you guys later.